You're most welcome to our service to stay on the 25th of October, whether you're joining us on Facebook, whether you'll join us on YouTube or on the telephone, or even look at the service through the website. You're most welcome. Let us begin with a few words again from the Psalms and God's Word. There's a few notices and we'll come to those slides in a minute. Um, but just to mention to you some things for the locality here, um, in a couple of weekends time, it's Remembrance Sunday. It's a time when you remember all those whose lives were lost, especially in the two world wars, but in other wars and conflicts. And we, um, we have a poppy appeal, which supports those who are veterans who are um, still in need of support particularly those who've been injured and maimed in conflicts. Um, so there will be a drive-through poppy appeal, donations towards that, uh, and that will be happening on the 8th of November, between 2.30 and 3.30, a drive-through only, because of the level five restrictions, uh, in the car park of Stranola Church of Ireland, here in Stranola. Um, and thank you very much to Bonnie and Aubrey for making that happen. Other things coming up and happening at this time, Kingdom Kids for this day will be going up um, very soon, um, and that will be going up online via our uh, Facebook page and our website. I hope the children have enjoyed and have found great the, um, the throne room. A huge thank you to the churches in Donegal for sharing this so generously with us, the churches of the Church of Ireland, Presbyterian and Methodist in Donegal. We very much appreciate your generosity. Speaking of generosity, um, come back to that one in a minute. Uh, there we go. Um, next Sunday is harvest. We had hoped that we might have had harvest physically together in the building and with you over the in airwaves, but it's only the over the airwaves this year due to the circumstances we're in. Um, but it's been such a trying time for so many we need to remember when we give thanks for what we have, those who have less. So I'm asking if you could please bring some donations and there'll be a crate outside both of the schools of this parish, parishes I should say, one outside Robertson School here in Stranola and one outside Welshtown School out in Welshtown, um, Glenmore, Glenfin area. Um, a more detailed list will go up on the website and on the um, Facebook page later on, but basically non-perishable items um, such as biscuits, tins of fruit and other tinned items, sweets, crisps, toiletries, uh, coloring books and pens. If you're donating them, please put them into something plastic because we will be checking that box and collecting them. But you know what the weather is like in Donegal. We don't want them to get too wet. Another thing that's going to happen very soon is Alpha. Uh, some of you who are of this parish, the Finn Valley, will have remembered a few years ago when we did Alpha. Well, we're doing Alpha online with the diocese, where you get the chance to ask those questions, what it is that your 
dying to know about God, Bible, prayer, uh, and who is this Jesus that we mention so often? You may still have many, many questions. But in order to take part in this, a bit like taking part in this service, you'll need a smartphone or a tablet or a laptop that can run Zoom because it'll be running on Zoom. Um, and also, if you have, you're fortunate enough to have all of those gadgets, the, the best thing would be the thing with the biggest screen. You'll find it a bit easier on the eye. So if you have all of them, do it on the laptop. Uh, to sign up, there is the email address there and a link as well. And they'll also be going up on the Facebook page and on the website. Uh, and that should be more than worthwhile. And there are many of us from across the diocese who are leading and helping with this, including myself. So there's much to be happening and much to be happening. There's also a day of prayer coming up, but I'll mention that with a few other reminders towards the end of the service. But the reason we're here this morning is to gather in worship. And worship includes prayer, song, Bible, and a response by us coming back to God. So let us pause to lay aside the week that has been, to leave ahead of us the week that is to come and to pause and to welcome God into our midst and into our homes and into wherever we may find ourselves this morning, this afternoon. Gracious Father, bring your blessing into this meeting wherever we find ourselves, of your people, gathered here today across the valley, the airwaves, these islands and further afield. Speak to our hearts through the hymns, the prayers that are said, and the reading and the understanding of your word. We return to God, recognizing that we have often rebelled against him. We've often walked away or not walked the path he set before us. So we say to him, close your eyes to my sins and wipe out my evil. Create a pure heart in me, O God, and put a new and loyal spirit in me. Do not banish me from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit away from me. These are the words of Psalmist, most likely of David, who knew what it meant to wander away from God, but always turn back to God. So let us return to the Lord our God and say to him, Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourself as those who once were dead, but now have life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive us our sins, open our eyes to God's truth, and strengthen us to, God's, to do God's will, and give us the joy of his kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We now have a few songs of worship to sing together. Before the throne of God above, I have a strong and perfect plea.
the prayer for this Sunday, often known as Bible Sunday. Blessed Lord, who caused all Holy Scripture to be written for our learning, help us to hear them, to read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them. That through the patience and the comfort of your Holy Word, we may embrace forever and hold fast that blessing of hope of everlasting life, which you've given us in our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We come now to our first reading from the Bible today from Thessalonians chapter 2. Read by Elsie, thank you. The first reading is taken from St. Paul's letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. You yourselves know, brothers and sisters, that our coming to you was not in vain. But though we had already suffered and have been shamefully maltreated at Philippi, as you know, we had courage in our God to declare to you the gospel of God in spite of great opposition. For our appeal does not spring from deceit or impure motives or trickery, but just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the message of the gospel, even so we speak not to please mortals, but to please God who tests our heart. As you know, and as God is our witness, we never came with words of flattery or with a pretext for greed, nor did we seek praise from mortals, whether from you or from others, though we might have made demands as apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, like a nurse tenderly caring for her own children. So deeply do we care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you have become very dear to us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Elsie. We now come to our psalm. Psalm 119. How can young people keep their way pure? by guarding it according to your word. With my, my whole heart, I seek you. Do not let me stray from your commandments. I treasure your word in my heart, so I may not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. With my lips, I declare all the ordinance of your mouth. I delight in the way of your decrees, as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts, and fix my eyes on your ways. I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. And together we say, happy are those who walk in the law of the Lord. Amen. Our next reading is from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 22, beginning at verse 34. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first, in com first commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now, when the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. Who do you think of the Messiah? Or what do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, how is it then that David by the spirit calls him Lord, saying the Lord is my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. This is the gospel, the good news of the Lord Jesus. Amen. I pray, Lord, as we come now to your word, may your word speak into our hearts and minds and souls and bodies. May we have ears to hear, hearts to respond. And may, Lord, you, you help me as I seek to follow in your ways and to share your word, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Bear with me one moment while I um, get this thing working. 
So I, as we come, Lord, to your word, may we find a renewed courage and strength in you. I'm just keeping track of all the different bits and pieces I need to keep track of. Would you believe that when I looked at this passage, I'm actually reminded of a marriage. There are a couple of things. Even though we often use the more contemporary version of, the, of all of the services in our prayer book, I am actually familiar with the more traditional services and words. And the older form of words came to mind to me, but I'll come back to that in a moment. But another reason I'm reminded of a marriage is that this reading from Matthew, I usually, to, to look at a Bible passage, I look at what comes before and after the passage, because otherwise you can take it so out of context that it's not saying what it needs to be saying, what Jesus and God intended it to be saying. And what comes just before this is one of the Sadducees you heard mentioned at the beginning of our reading from Matthew. They were dismissed. And the reason they were dismissed is one of the Sadducees who didn't believe in resurrection gave to Jesus another question about one poor lady who was married to seven brothers. It's not so much seven brides for seven brothers, it's one bride for seven brothers. And they said, well, in, when they all get to heaven, whose bride will she be? And Jesus basically said, you've got too narrow a distinction, mind and understanding. There'll be no such thing as marriage as you understand when you get to heaven. So stop thinking in such a narrow way. Um, so they went off with their metaphorical tails between their legs. But the reason, another reason why I'm thinking of marriage, and before I come to that, I want to say a heartfelt thought, prayer, and concern for all those couples in these times who have planned and longed for their day, and their day has been postponed time and time again, and they've had to adapt and change. They may still be waiting. They may have had their, their time together, that marriage together, that especially for those who wanted to get married in these times, it has been a most difficult time. Uh, so I want to say to you, my, my thoughts and prayers are with you as well today. Um, and I haven't, I'm not unaware that it has been especially difficult for couples. But returning to where we are today, Jesus asked the question, um, love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind, is another way to put it, and love your neighbors yourself. In many ways, it actually mirrors the marriage vows. Do you promise to love, honor, cherish, and protect? Or obey is one of the word, other words. And forsaking all others and holding only to forevermore and each of the couples, each one of the couple, the groom and the bride say, I do. They in many ways mirror what that greatest commandment is. And they mirror what Jesus has also said but we'll take one little bit at a time. We'll go first to the reading of Thessalon Thessalonians. Now, all these letters from Paul are written by Paul to churches he has been to. He remembers them. It's a bit like he's doing the first century version of an email or a Zoom call back to them, saying, how are you doing? And here are my suggestions and thoughts and prayers for you in these times. So he's writing to a church in Thessalonica in modern day Greece, and he's recalling what has happened to him and his companion when they were on their journey. That they went through Philippi nearby and they were very mistreated. And they were presumably ridiculed and berated for what they are, who they believe in Jesus and what they're about, what they're doing. And yet he contrasts this against the people of Thessalonica. He has seen in them their great courage to share the good news of Jesus, even though they've got in a position. And he recognizes that they recognize Paul and his companion, and probably companions, that they recognize Paul did not have deceit. Paul did not do this out of any vain ambition. He didn't do it to pull the wool metaphorically over their eyes, to manipulate them, to steer them in a direction for his own motives. He did this for entirely selfless and pure reasons, as is the nature of the message of the gospel. And I felt that was a good place for us to start. 
because myself and Elsie and John, who lead these services on Sunday morning, we're not perfect, but we do this work, this sharing, this service, as we try and be like Paul. We wish to share with you the good news of Jesus. We don't wish to manipulate, to steer for our own ends, or to in any way distort what it is that Jesus is sharing. We offer this as freely as we're humanly able, without any ulterior motives as we're humanly able, so that as Paul desires and we desire, that you would know this Jesus, know the message that this Jesus shares, but more than that, know the message of Jesus, who is the son, who Jesus refers to, that little phrase about David and Matthew, but the father, the creator father, who we give thanks to next week at harvest, and the spirit who gives us courage, gives us strength, gives us hope. The thing that we try and do is we who are frail human beings try and share that good news. And we try and do it in obedience because we believe that God has asked to do it. And we believe it that, like Jesus says, it's a pearl of great price. But it's a pearl that's not meant to be held onto or hidden in a pocket. We will hold it out to you and offer it to you that you may see it for what it is and speak to God and God will speak to you. But, oops, it went a bit faster than I had. But one of the first things that came there was the people in Philippi were rebelling, but who were they rebelling against? They probably thought they were rebelling against Paul and his companions. But actually, as Paul was doing it not for his own benefit, I'm sure he would have much rather not been persecuted, tortured, and run out of town, as he was on many occasions. But he's doing it to serve his Lord and our Lord. So actually, the people who were rebelling against Paul and rebelling against God's word in these days aren't rebelling against Paul or myself or whoever might be leading these services. We are rebelling against God as our confession did at the very beginning. That's why we come back to God. So many ways we're actually kicking against God. But thankfully, God is such a gracious God that he keeps saying, will you come back to me? Will you return to me? So there we have in the second um, slide here, we didn't have any hidden motives when we won you over. We didn't try and fool you or trick you. This isn't like a magic trick. I'm not going to get a top hat out, and pull a rabbit out of a hat. I'm not going to wave a wand and say I'm abracadabra. But then I think that also has deeper implications. Because I think in human beings, we want a quick answer, especially in these days. And we would love a quick solution, especially in these times. But God works throughout the whole of time and outside time. And so God doesn't do the magic wand. He does work. He is in control. And he is in charge. But often he does it in such a subtle way that we have to look deeper and search for him and not just seek him, but not, not just even seek his answers, but seek his help. It's not that he's unwilling or incapable, but he desires that we seek him. So when we come to know him and his power and his answers, in that seeking, we've gone a long way with him and we've walked with him and he's walked with us. He is trying to bring us back, if you will, to that point in the Garden of Eden, in the cool of the day, which we have cool all day at this time of the year. But in the cool of the day, Adam, and presumably then Eve, would walk with God and they'd talk, they'd spend time together. That's what God desires to do with us. So there's no magic wand here. And Paul says the message is complete, accurate and based in the truth. And it does not change. We may have changed the way we share the message. I never thought at the beginning of 2020, I'd be staring at a camera, trying to speak to you in your front room. Thankfully, I can't see you because maybe you'll be in your pajamas or maybe you'll be sitting around the fire. Earlier in the year, you're probably out in the garden. You, I, you can see me, but I can't see you. But I'm sure you'll probably say that's a blessing. But I'm sharing from the same Bible and the same words as people have done before me in a much more, much more different way, the people in house. But we've had to do it this way so that the word and the message can be shared. 
So we come to God, we return to him, and he's given us this gospel that I'm now sharing with you, this good news of salvation through faith in Christ. And we have a picture there, that's a, a friend of mine, Joanne, and she's holding her hands up to the cross and saying, yes, I receive that message, I receive you, Jesus, and I want to walk with you and you to walk with me and to walk my journey of life together. I have done that myself, and it's not that it's not without difficulty. Look at, look at these times, for example. But I'm not on that journey alone. I'm on a journey with God and with God's people. And in a sense, we're journeying together now here in this service. You may be at home, you may be away, but we are together together in God's will and God's way. So now I come to um, the bit from Matthew's gospel that we had from our other Eden today. Jesus responded and therefore asked that young lawyer a question and he asks of us. And then Jesus asked of us, what is the most important over all things? Love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind. This is the first commandment. And the second is like it. Love others as much as you love yourself. That's a slightly condensed version of what Jesus said. So I come back to um, those wedding vows. And you've got one person takes the other. Uh, and I've changed it a little bit here because this would be perhaps our response to Jesus. So I, Adam, or whoever you may be watching this, take Jesus to be my Lord. I promise to love him, honor, cherish, and protect my relationship with him, forsaking all others and holding only to him forevermore. And the bride says, I do. And you might notice I've said the bride. And you might think that might sound a little funny coming from myself, a male, a man, but all of us, the people of God, together are called the church, but we're also called the bride of Christ. And Jesus is our groom. So however unusual or it may feel or sound to us guys, perhaps more so than the women, that is what we're called to be. And as I come towards a close, I want to take that image and, and <laughs> that image of a loving relationship between us and our groom, Jesus, and our wholehearted commitment to him, and he to us, that others around us, together as part of the Bride of Christ. I'm gonna move around and hopefully you can still hear me. Uh, and we're going to, John is gonna magically try and work the technology. I forgot to mention this to John, my senior apologies. Remember I showed you, I said that we're only frail human beings trying to share this message. I have some things beside me here on the table that I hold up in case they're out of camera shot. The first is an oil lamp. Now you might be wondering why I have an oil lamp. Well, you, Jesus mentioned wedding, bride, and a wedding feast many times because of this, the church being the bride of Christ. So of an oil lamp here, and you might remember the seven maidens, the seven virgins with an oil lamp and they had very little oil in their lamps. I have little oil in my lap. And they, had, they asked the others who were ready, give us some oil. And the others said, we can't, we won't have enough. They went away and got the oil. And by the time they came back, the feast had started and they were shut out. Thankfully, I'm ready and I've got some oil for my lamp. What Jesus is saying there is, do you recognize that you're part of this wedding and this coming together? And do you recognize that you need to be ready? You can't say, well, I'll leave it till another time because you don't know when that time will be. The other bit I have here is my stole. I use this at weddings, very thankfully made for me by friends, Peter and Fiona Mallinson, who are now in South of England. And what I do is I hold the couple's hand together, put, and I use this to wrap together. A reminder to them that a cord of three strands husband and wife and God are not easily broken, but also that our relationship with God should not easily be broken. In Revelation, at the end of the Bible, the last book of the Bible, it speaks about Jesus coming back to heaven 
and the Father is returning as well. There'll be a new heaven, a new earth, new Jerusalem. But the people of God are described as a bride, ready and willing and perfectly prepared. And I'm sure any bride would be able to tell anyone of how much effort she goes together and goes to and desire she has to look just so perfect on her day. The hair, the makeup, the dress. Now, obviously I couldn't wear a wet dress. I'm not married, I'm not female, but I thought I'd go the next best thing and I'd wear the waistcoat that I often wear for a wedding because I feel that everybody else dresses up. Why should the rector look second best? But it's a reminder that we do our very best for God. We make ourselves ready. We work at it. We work at our faith with fear and trembling. Um, and a reminder, another time in the Bible, Jesus says in John 14, let your hearts not be troubled, believe in me. And he says about many rooms, that Jesus has done the preparation for us. He's gone ahead, he's ready to receive us, to receive us in that perfect relationship. As he is the groom, he's prepared the place for us. In Corinthians, another letter from Paul to the church in Corinth, he says that of God, that how God has no jealousy for us, but that we are betrothed like Mary and Joseph. Joseph, if you remember, was betrothed to Mary. And God helped Jesus keep his commitments to Mary even before they were married and explained to Joseph what was happening because Mary having a baby before they were married was very difficult for Joseph because of matters of respect and honor then, but especially as also now. And so this reminds us of our commitment and our covenant. Because when I have the privilege of doing many marriages as I do, we desire and pray that God be with that couple from that day forward until the end of their lives on earth. It's a solemn commitment the prayer book reminds us of. And so it reminds us of a solemn commitment that God has made to us and we make back to God. In a moment, I'm going to leave you with this picture, and I leave you with this picture for a good reason. Um, it reminds us with the words that we are the bride of Christ, to be ready for him. But you see in the background of that picture, a rainbow. And that's another of the biblical covenants in the Bible. I think it's the first one. That God said that whenever he sees a rainbow in the sky, he would not flood the earth as he did in times of Noah. And that's God's solemn commitment that will not be broken. He is a solemn commitment to us, to Jesus, on the cross that you see behind me. And we need to commit back to him. So from the, these two relatively short passages, which seem on first glance so simple, yet take us so deeply and encompass so much of life, it's something that we need to reflect on and respond to and prayerfully say, God, help me hear, help me understand, and help me respond. As I try and do, as I hope you will try and do it together with me in a moment. So I leave you with this picture for a moment. It's Garden Lake with a rainbow over, over it. Remember God's covenant to us, lets us covenant back to him. I now come to the next part. This is also taken from our prayer book. Nearly all of, of those of you I would imagine watching, but perhaps not all of you, but many of you I'm sure are baptized. Baptism in our church is usually for children, but doesn't need to be, it could be adults as well. But baptism is a time when we place the child or the person before God and say, we think it's the most important way in life to walk with God and God with them. This bit that you have here is taken from the service of receiving somebody into the church, but it's also the same as the same words used in the confirmation service. Think of the two candidates whose confirmation was postponed but will hopefully happen next year. 
where when we're ready, old enough or ready, whichever comes first, that we would say that, yes, that covenant, that promise back to God. So without further ado, I'll read through the words, and may it be our response today to Jesus, to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God calls us from darkness into his marvelous light. To follow Christ means dying to sin and rising to new life with him. Therefore, I ask, do you reject the devil and all proud rebellion against God? And we say, I reject them. Do you renounce the deceit and corruption of evil? I renounce them. Do you repent of the sins that separate us from God and neighbor? I repent of them. Do you turn to Christ as Savior? I turn to Christ. Do you submit to Christ as Lord? I submit to Christ. Do you come to Christ the way, the truth, and the life? I come to Christ. So we now have worship God in song, in reading, in word, response. We now do so in prayer. Thank you, Elsie. Let us pray. God of love, as we come to you with thanksgiving for the privilege of prayer, we offer our petitions on behalf of the church throughout the world, on behalf of ourselves, and all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, thank you for your inspired word. We pray that your church would remain firm in the faith, grow in love, and rejoice in Christ. Thank you, Father, that you have shown your faithfulness by raising up leaders in every generation within your church. We pray for those who work tirelessly to spread the good news of the love of Jesus while often facing hostility and ridicule from others. May we, as the members of your church, know how to serve our leaders well. Help us to pray for them, to love them, and to honor them so that we, like Paul and the early church, will learn true obedience and strive to do your will. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father God, we thank you for the leaders of your church here in Ireland. We pray for Bishop Andrew and the clergy of this diocese. Thank you for the calling you have placed on each of their lives and for their obedience and following where you have led them. Thank you for their willingness to serve you by serving us. We ask that you would sustain them by growing them deeper in grace and in love, and in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray for Reverend Adam. Thank you for all he has done to serve and encourage us over the past months by facilitating, with the help of John and others, to roll out the online services each Sunday and by praying for us. May the joy of the Lord be his strength in all the difficulties and trials of life so that Christ is seen in him and others may be drawn to Jesus through his witness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we praise and thank you for your amazing love and pray that it would penetrate our hearts, change us and overflow from us to others. Although we may be separated by the restrictions placed upon us by the global pandemic, we pray that we will remain united in the knowledge you are indeed our refuge and strength, a very pleasant help in trouble, our peace in this COVID-19 storm. Thank you for the example we gain from the lives of the Thessalonian Christians, whose work of faith, labor of love, and steadfast hope in the Lord Jesus is an example to us all of godly living that honors you. Forgive us, Lord, when we have thought of ourselves more highly than we ought and forgot to put our relationship with you first. Forgive us, we pray, when we have loved only those who love us and ignored or turned away from those whom we would deem different to ourselves, but as much in need of a warm smile and the hand of friendship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, 
Forgive us when we waste our lives by being too busy to enjoy your creation. Just as you rested from your work on the seventh day and made it holy, help us to practice the discipline of keeping Sunday as a day to give you thanks and praise and to take time out to enjoy and appreciate your creation. Lord of all nations, we pray for peace, justice and reconciliations in all places of conflict in our world. We give thanks for all those who work behind the scenes to bring an end to war and oppression. We pray that your spirit of peace will fill those in authority with a new resolve to use their power and authority for the good of all people. God of life and hope, we pray for our government during these challenging times. May they seek the guidance of your Holy Spirit to give them wisdom and courage. May they and all members of Dáil Éireann work together in unity for the common good of stemming the rate of the COVID-19 infection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of our lives, we pray for our communities, our neighbours, our colleagues at work, our friends and families. We pray also that you would increase our love for our neighbours. Grant us the willingness to encourage and spur one another to a greater level of love and service in these strange times of isolation and separation. Father, we pray that you would give us a forgiving heart towards those who either hurt us physically or emotionally. We pray that you will give us the ability to forgive and not to hold on to ill feelings. God of love, we thank you for the gift of marriage and family life. We pray for the grace and humility that is needed to bring love and understanding into broken relationships. We pray especially for all those who are at risk in homes where there is violence and abuse. We pray that your spirit will protect the vulnerable, restrain the angry, and bring comfort and new insight into the lives of those who feel trapped and alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing Lord, we bring to you those we know who are ill or suffering in any way, for those in chronic pain and distress, for those who are terminally ill, and for those who are lonely, and for those who have mental health issues. Father, give to them all healing and restoration in body, mind, and spirit. We pray for those who are most vulnerable to COVID-19, for the elderly, the weak, and those with chronic conditions. Make us carriers of your hope, of your love to bring hope, joy, and peace to those overcome with fear. We pray for the caregivers on the front line, for nurses and doctors and healthcare workers. Lord, guard and guide them, shield and sustain them as they unselfishly care for their patients. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, thank you for the lives of all your faithful people who you have redeemed through the precious blood of your dear son and are now with you in eternity. Grant that we may humbly follow in their footsteps, boldly trusting in your promises and faithfully living out your word. Lord, we pray for those who mourn the death of a loved one, we ask you to comfort them in their sorrow. Fill the emptiness of their hearts with the presence of your everlasting love so that their lives may gradually be filled with the peace of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of life, thank you for your love. We praise you for all you have done for us. Help us in the week ahead to demonstrate our love for you and our love for our neighbours, and treat all people as we would wish to be treated. Amen. Thank you, Elsie. We draw our prayers to a close with the prayer that Jesus taught his first followers, and we join in now. Our Father. Our Father, 
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, ever and ever. Amen. 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 We come now to our final song and hymn today. There is a Redeemer, Jesus, God's own Son. Going to jump ahead a moment. No one. There we go. You'll hear gently in the background the music playing, but that we, we'll come back to that. A reminder of the National Day of Prayer that's happening on the 31st of October this month. See dayofprayer.ie. The time for us to pray into this pandemic, pray for the vaccine, pray for those who are working so hard to get that ready. Pray for those who are working so hard in our health services and those who are on the front line. And that's not just doctors and nurses, so don't get me wrong, pray for them especially. But for those who are care assistants going into homes, those who are keeping the wheels of things going so we have light, electricity, heating and food and so much more. Um, but also pray that God would speak into these times and that, like Paul said, that the message would, re, would be not one of malice or anything like that, but would be seen as good news, a pearl of great price, that we may respond to him in Jesus' name. Amen. So dayofprayer.ie, uh, and at the end of this month, we all Christians, regardless of the domination or place, would come together in prayer. So I'm going to go backwards now to where we were. And we now have our closing prayer and blessing. And hopefully we'll have the music back again. Will we? Yep. Thank you to John. I'd be lost without my two very helpful assistants, 
Elsie and prayer and reading and John and things technical. So I just wanted to say another thank you as, as needs be said uh, for them. So and the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us and we have seen his glory, the glory of the father's only son, full of grace and truth. And may the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing that through the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the power and the blessing of Almighty, the by, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and evermore. Amen. Sorry, I got a bit tongue-tied there. So I leave you with a few reminders of what is coming up. Don't forget uh, those non-perishable donations, please, which goes to those in need in this time. There'll be a crate outside the school in Robertson and Welshtown during this week. So Kingdom Kids for the children, the day of prayer and Alpha. Thank you.